I would say uh, all the different people I've met in different churches that I've served. Um, I came from a, a different denomination, so I've really enjoyed confirmation classes and disciple Bible study, uh, all of the various uh, studies actually that's offered to us in the United Methodist Church. Since I've been a chaplain, I have to say for me, that has been the most meaningful. It has brought together my gifts and, and my pastoral call to be present with others. Um, I've had the joy and also, um, it's also difficult to be with persons in the most vulnerable times of their lives and in the local churches as well as in chaplaincy, how people open up and trust you. Being a member of the district committee on ministry and as a bivocational and a local pastor, I was in those meetings and I'm still a member of the committee. I learned so much from the elders, the deacons that are there, from the laity and from the candidates that are coming through. And it's just an amazing experience seeing what the Holy Spirit's doing in all of those lives and learning and then it helped me in my local context. I brought back from those meetings so much information and such joy. That I was ordained with three deacon women is especially meaningful for me. I've been in church my entire life, but I did not see an ordained woman for my first 30 years. And so then that changed when my children's preschool happened to have a United Methodist Church attached to it. And so from then on, I've met gifted clergy women who have um, become friends and mentors and then helped me envision responding to my own call to ordain ministry. One of the uh, tools that became available to us in chaplaincy over this time of pandemic and isolation was use, utilizing uh, video equipment to be able to connect, to connect families and patients together. And that, I, I'm not tech savvy, and I thought, oh my gosh. <laughs> but I opened myself up and, and there it was, a way to connect family and the, and the person. And for me, that's the, the key here in terms of connecting with the mission field that we have, uh, utilizing those tools that are available to us I've discovered that the different things that we've done to different churches, uh, what one church does may or may not work in your church, but it can be adept. And I think the two words that I believe are important, whatever a church and people do, is they, they need to be adaptable and they need also to be uh, readily available to listen uh, did I say listen? Yeah, to listen and to be able to interact with the people. When we make opportunities for people to gather as community, that the Holy Spirit steps in and does amazing things. So just provide a space for people to gather in fellowship, study, in service, uh, to form relationships, and see what the Holy Spirit does with that. Get involved with your city council because they have their ear to the ground, know what's going on. And the church needs to be a vital part of the civic affairs. One of the first things I did at First Church was I made an appeal to the congregation. I said, folks, city council of this city needs people to serve on their boards and commissions. We need to step up. It's gonna be a tough road, it is. But it's an important road. And to be honest with yourself and trust the laity, trust your colleagues, reach out to them. You know, when, when you are in that desert, there's a plane flying overhead, wave to it, you need help. And that's something that's so incredible. The love that you'll feel within your local church, 
there are people that are willing to listen, that are willing to pastor you, and that's so important. I would encourage the ordinands to connect with their clergy colleagues. Stay connected, celebrate together, and support each other. And also to pay attention to the ministry and the wisdom of experienced clergy and laypersons. Hear their stories and use what you bring that's fresh and new for this day and time and blend it with what you can glean from those who have helped pave the way. And then finally, I would say be authentic, be humble, be grateful, be hopeful, and joyfully be who you are as a beloved child of God. Please remember that the lay people you serve have been there, many of them a lot longer than some have even been alive. And so trust your lay people, listen to your lay people, love them as best as you can. I admit that there are some people that are hard to love, but that doesn't mean we don't love because God has said, love me, love your neighbor. But Jesus said, you need to love one another so that other people know that uh, you are my people. Uh, when I did my address before the annual conference, and when I was coming in as an ordinary, I used it's a hymn that's very important to me, and it's uh, the Lord of the Dance. Those of you who are in the conference may know that I'm a liturgical dancer, uh, but that phrase, that, that um, verse that says, dance, dance, wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the Dance, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance. And again, just like those words from Here I Am, Lord, that for me has been a call and a reflection. That circle of life, we know the story of Jesus our Christ from birth to life to death to new life. And remember in your journey, you will move from birth, new relationships with going to new churches, going to new mission fields, uh, to life and, and living that life with those people. And remember in your journeys to connect with your other clergy, connect with persons to provide you counseling, connect with places where you can get the support you need so that in your moving from birth to life to death to new life, you will find the support to continue in this journey that God has given you.